This has been the source of my grief for the past few days. Everything started out very innocently. I got six Dell servers and split them into two Proxmox cluster, three nodes each. Using Lifecycle Manager, I upgraded the servers to the latest firmware, BIOS, and so on. On the first cluster, I had completely no issues. On the second one, however, I noticed I cannot achieve higher upload speeds than around 6 megabits on 10 gigabit link across all three servers. It's a bit funny how I found it out. I migrated one of the GitLab environments to the new server and got complaints that suddenly cloning repositories became very slow. I suspected that maybe storage is acting up, but a quick speed test proved that it was a network issue. After that, it became apparent that it's not the VM itself that's at fault, but the problem lies in the hypervisor. I've done more tests with Hyper 3 and all three servers in the cluster have the same issue. All in all, everything seems to work, it's just that upload is capped at around 6 megabits. And this is how my descent into madness began. So what's the difference between working and non-working servers? As far as I'm concerned, there's none. They are running the same version of Proxmox with the same kernel, they have the same 10 gigabit cards, their firmware is the same and everything uses the same driver slash kernel module. Both digital and hardware twins. This is a good moment to introduce the Troublemaker card. It's an Intel X710, a dual port 10 gigabit interface. On Proxmox side, the interfaces are configured into LACP bond, and on top of that I'm configuring bridges corresponding to connected VLANs. Switch stack has a corresponding aggregated interface. The interface bonding is an absolute must-have for me, as it provides seamless redundancy in case one of the switches in the stack fails, or fiber gets unplugged or damaged. It's a simple virtual interface, an abstraction hovering over physical interfaces. So. What do you do when you notice something like this? Well, you should read kernel messages very carefully. But I performed firmware upgrades on the faulty servers. While not necessarily a bad thing, it didn't fix anything. After that, I rolled back to the previous firmware versions just to have everything consistent across my environment. Dell's lifecycle controller makes that really easy and overall is a really cool tool. Back to the DMESG. At this point, I did some googling and I knew I needed to poke around i40e, which is the kernel module for supporting this family of Intel NICs. And bang, here's the first sign that something's not quite right. As a side note, I also tried rebooting the switch stack the servers are connected to, but that didn't help at all. One quick comparison later, and the other servers initialize without any errors. So now the working cluster has a complete ban on any upgrades, kernel, firmware, anything, and I'm focusing on the faulty ones. Now 100% of my Google searchers include i40e, and I start to unravel some interesting posts from a distant past. I personally would not recommend to install the out-of-band Intel drivers. More on that in a second. Oh look, an official Intel driver repository. It seems that this driver or the whole line of products has been somewhat problematic. Let's play with this kernel module a bit. Proxmox seems to have theirs pretty old and out of date. I've downloaded the Intel's i40e repo and compiled the latest version. Funny enough, it only made things worse, since then I lost all connectivity to the network and I couldn't ping anything. I've tried all the versions that I was able to compile, since only a recent handful of them supported Proxmox kernel. But not only that, I was still getting kernel error messages, albeit uh, they were a bit different. Finally, I spent 15 minutes fiddling around because I forgot I can easily do make uninstall if I want to go back to the default module. Here's the worst part. I was still getting the DMESG error messages, but somehow, for a brief moment, I was able to get normal transfer speeds after all of that ordeal. Few reboots later and it reverted back to 6 megabits though. And here I am now, still trying to solve this. I still want to verify uh, a few more things like running another OS with a different kernel version or checking if I still have the same issues under a different switch. I do get a bit worried though because I think I saw a forum thread where the user said Yeah, I have 12 servers and this problem only occurs on 3 of them. If this is what I think it is, I really don't feel well versed enough to debug weird kernel modules race conditions. When all that fails, I should probably look for support on the Proxmox forums. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Please subscribe, like and all that. It helps me prove to my boss that this thing I'm doing is not a waste of time.
So if I'll have any update, I'll be sure to post it because I think this problem is really obscure. Until then, see you next time.